clear. The numbers are clear. Atlantic City is safer now than it was before a casino. Compared to any typical city on the East Coast, it's no worse than in the middle. And you can make an argument that if you really take everybody at risk, every visitor that comes to the town, then it's interesting. We could make an argument, I think, that at least for tourists, Atlantic City is a very, very safe town. Okay? Got it for me. Linda Cohn. Is Linda here? She was supposed to come. Okay. Linda Cohn and I, have, she's the crime reporter for the local newspaper. She and I have had discussions in the past on this, and there was an article a few weeks ago in which she mentioned my first point about the, uh, the exaggeration of the numbers, but she never gets into the next two right. points. Uh, and that's, in a way, a very unfortunate. When I've had dealings with media from around the country, they just don't want to hear about it. Yeah. It's just totally <laughs> against what is in their mind, and they think I'm some cool. <laughs> Even though these are official numbers. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't create these numbers. And as Chief White said, every single crime, according to the rules, whether it's being reported to ACPD or to NJDGE, uh, in town we also have the, um, uh, what do you call it, the... Uh, New Jersey Transit Police, they report the crimes. It all gets in there. Nothing, to my knowledge, is being repressed. Uh, the numbers have come down, so as a, as a good demographer, I'm always asking myself, has the reporting requirements changed? But I've researched this, and according to the official state police unit, no, they haven't. So I'm fairly confident that this is a real trend, and it's not being suppressed somehow by some of the data aren't being reported. As Mr. Marino was speaking, that's all I could think about was right. helping yeah. get that information out there um, in a way that doesn't look as though we are um, with using it for like public relations. Yeah, or like, like, that. like making it Make seem better. disingenuous, right? Mm -hmm. In any way. But one thing I am going to do is I just completed a developer's handbook, so to speak, and in it is just all the positive things that are happening in the city as far as development, events that are happening, um, public infrastructure projects, park and playground projects. We're, it's very generic and we're making it, it is available <coughs> on our website for anyone to use if they need to convince someone mm -hmm. that Atlantic City is doing really well. And I'm gonna add a few slop slides on public safety to that presentation so it gets out there. And, and I know people are going to be using this to go to banks, to get loans, to invest in the city, and other and other uses. So I can get it out that way. We should post your slideshow on the planning website. You can do that. And of course, Chief White's White wants to put it on his website. Any other ideas about getting it? Can I, can I post it on YouTube? Can I post this presentation on YouTube? I don't have yeah, a problem with that. Mr. Moreno? Yeah, I have no problem. Okay. Oh, uh, any other thoughts yeah. on that real quick? Yeah, creative AC. Okay, Creative AC is an effort that happened about a week and a half, two weeks mm -hmm. ago. Yeah, and it was really viral. Amazing. People th from the community came together and just brainstormed for two full days on how to make Atlantic City better. And I know this topic came up a lot. And the reason I'm, that I wanted to have this talk is because every single noontime talk, people from the community do say, we know it is safe here. We live here. We love it here. And people always question that. And we know that the perception is not what is the reality. That is really what needs. We need an army of PR people. Okay? Everyone in this room really needs to take responsibility and do what they can to post on Facebook or wherever you are on social media. I've learned how to do Twitter. And, um, I have a couple followers, maybe three or four. Um, but, so we all have to do that because it, we can't hire a PR person right now. So I think actually we will have, have be more effective if we all, all can do it. And we're at a convention in Philadelphia, and we came across a vendor up there who was showing us body cameras. And what these are are a very small camera. When the officer shows up at an event, the officer has a interaction with a pedestrian on the street. All he has to do is press this button here in the middle, and this camera records audio and video. The worn up here on the, uh, the shirt level, on the jackets. So it has, on average, pretty much a face-to-face, -face, uh, you know, line of sight. As the police officer moves, the camera moves. The police officer uh, has been involved in foot pursuit. 
The camera follows them all the way along. Everything is shown here is reviewed by our supervisor. The uh, officer at the end of his tour takes the camera to a docking station. The docking station electronically saves all the information that was used and, and recorded on these cameras. The recordings are routinely looked at by a supervisor for a number of reasons. One, as it goes along with a criminal case where the officer made an arrest. Two, to make sure the officer is doing their job properly. And three, as a result of a possible internal affairs complaint. As Lieutenant Pierce showed you, these cameras are helping the internal affairs complaints to go down at a record pace. It shows a true and honest recording of the event. It's going to, it also, as we said, it records audio. Many of our complaints are, the officer said this about me, the officer said that to me. The officer was disrespectful, rude. It shows right here if the officer is wrong, but also shows right here if the officer was right.